My name is Diane Schreiner, and I'm the vice president of a patient advocacy organization called ECD Global Alliance, and we're trying to raise awareness and help families and patients with a very rare disease called erdheim chester disease. I've been involved on the board of directors since 2018, and my husband is a patient. That's how I got involved. erdheim chester disease, it's, a, it's ECD, yes. and it's a histiocytic neoplasm. So it's a blood cancer, it's extremely rare. There's estimated to be 2,000 patients worldwide, but we also think it's very underdiagnosed because most physicians have never heard of it, and so getting a diagno diagnosis is very difficult. So there's probably a lot more patients in the world than 2,000, but that's why we're here today, trying to raise awareness. We have a booth downstairs trying to get the physicians aware of the disease and to have it in their mind so that if they run across a patient that run into a wall and can't figure out what they have that they'll maybe think of the disease and at least try to rule it out or get a diagnosis of ECD. There's no evidence so far in the research that it's genetic. Um, so it's it can affect a, any age, but majority of the time it's adults. But we have seen it in infants and in teenagers. I mean, so it can affect other ages, but majority of it's adults. So this disease is interesting because it's multi-systemic so histiocytes travel through the blood so they can affect any organ and so for one patient it may be you know cardiovascular and liver and another patient may have neurological lesions in their brain so every patient can can present differently so it's which is one of the reasons why it's so hard to diagnose and so you know a radiologist might see it an endocrinologist might see it a neurologist might see it so that the journey can be difficult. 95% of patients have bone pain and so the first thing that my husband actually noticed he actually had diabetes insipidus but we didn't know what it was but it was the bone pain so he had ankle and knee pain and they unexplained and we didn't know why so he would go to doctors and they would they would say oh it's just a basketball injury you know you played too much basketball and you're getting older and that just happens and they'd send you away and it wasn't until he has tumors in his in his brain that the neurologist recognized and saw it and then we went to Mayo Clinic and got a diagnosis. So they can, the journey can be very long. So it depends on the specialty. So in endocrinology, which is the conference that we're at now, it would be things like diabetes insipidus, it could be hypothyroidism, it could be testosterone deficiency, th those kinds of things. And generally it's gonna be that plus other things so like maybe bone pain or something like that. So those are kind of the red flags, but you have to know about the disease first to be able to think of it to, diagnose, to get a diagnosis. So once you get a diagnosis, there's two FDA approved treatments that are targeted treatments. We have a BRAF inhibitor and a MEK inhibitor that are already FDA approved just in the last few years. Turns it into a chronic disease that you can live with and manage. And there's you know, the clinical trials and things going on for other types of targeted treatments as well. We hear the most often it's fatigue and bone pain, obviously financial challenges because it's a very expensive disease to have. We're a global organization, so the United States, we have a lot more access to drugs than in other countries, and so a lot of the patients in other countries have a very hard time getting drugs and getting the treatments that they need. It depends on your, where you are, but physically, with fatigue is the most often and bone pain, that kind of thing. My first advice would be to contact us, which is the ECD Global Alliance. We can connect patients and we have a lot of support for patients and family members. We can connect them with other physicians and we have chats with other patients so that you can not feel so alone because it's a very isolating diagnosis. We also have some a patient navigator that can help navigate them through the journey if they need help with, you know, finding a doctor or getting treatments or, you know, finding financial help, that, that kind of thing. We have resources that can help in that area. So I would suggest contacting the ECD Global Alliance and getting on our registry. You can get on the email. Mayo Clinic did a presentation today that was talking about diabetes insipidus and the ECD in the targeted treatments and how they responded to the targeted treatments. It was a very good, very good poster. By being aware of the disease, you could actually save someone's life, which they do every day. I mean, a lot of physicians save lives every day, so, but the difference between getting diagnosed and not getting diagnosed is literally life-changing in this disease. Whatever organ your, your body affects, it would eventually generally have organ failure. So it could be liver, it could be kidney, it could be neurology.